Google Finance. How to screen for income stocks. In the previous video, Google Finance 2, we saw how to use the Google Stock Screener. This video provides background on the United States market for income stocks. To use the stock screener effectively, we need to understand this market segment before starting. Dividends are the result of an implied promise that companies make to investors. Companies that never pay dividends renege on this promise. To invest in a company that reneges on its promises is foolish. However, many, if not most investors, do just that. For most of the history of the American capital market, dividend yields have been higher than bond yields. On this graph, the blue line represents the ratio of dividend yields to AAA bond yields. The thick horizontal green line represents 100% or when dividend yields equal bond yields. During the Great Depression, dividend yields reached almost three times the yields on bonds, as shown by the mountain peaks in the middle of the graph. After World War II, the capital market underwent structural changes. Over a 50-year period, dividend yields fell to less than 20% of bond yields. Income investors should understand exactly how this came about. The capital market is always evolving. History provides context as to where the market may go. Companies are not required to return the capital of common stock investors. Nor are they obligated to ever pay dividends. Investors in shares take a big risk. A much bigger risk than bond investors. When a company goes bankrupt, bondholders get first crack at corporate assets. Stockholders come last. Companies must pay interest on bonds. Otherwise, they can be sued and pushed into bankruptcy. There is no such protection for shareholders. Because stocks are riskier than bonds, it makes sense that stock dividend yields should be higher than bond yields. For many, many generations, yields on common stock in America were much higher than AAA bond yields. However, this began to change in the 1950s. It is no longer so. Before the 1950s, less than 5% of Americans invested in stocks. Most investors were businessmen who made their own decisions. They managed their own portfolios. They were smart enough to know that stocks were riskier than bonds. Today, most investors trust their wealth to mutual fund managers who they have never met. Most people no longer select their own stocks. They trust their retirement money to strangers. Before 1967, the average dividend yield on Standard & Poor's 500 stocks was 118% of the average yield on AAA bonds. In the 21st century, this is no longer the case. In the 19th century, the United States was a developing market. Investments came in from abroad primarily Great Britain. The blue line shows dividend yields higher than bond yields, and moving higher. 1876 was the beginning of the golden decade of American invention. During these 10 years, the free enterprise system spawned the invention of the electric light, transformer, electric railways, electric motors, power stations, the internal combustion engine, the automobile, the dirigible, reinforced concrete, the telephone, the motion picture camera, the phonograph, the vending machine, linotype, roll film, the fountain pen, the dictaphone, the cash register, the indoor flush toilet, and much more. 
high dividend yields attracted capital from investors abroad, and domestic capitalists, like Andrew Carnegie, who became rich on dividends alone. During the Great Depression, stock prices fell dramatically. There was fear that capitalism would not survive. In this time of deflation, investors preferred bonds to stocks. Consequently, dividend yields soared relative to the yield on bonds. At times, dividend yields were double the yield on bonds. During these years, investors still looked to the fundamental value of corporations in valuing common stocks. The two most important works on security analysis were published towards the end of the 1930s. Benjamin Graham and David Dodd, two professors from Columbia University, published the monumental work, Security Analysis, which is still popular today, after three generations. Graham and Dodd's Security Analysis taught that investors should value common stocks on the basis of intrinsic value, which meant what could the company pay an investors as dividends or return of capital in the case of liquidation. Warren Buffett, who later became one of the most famous investors of the 20th century, was a student of Ben Graham at Columbia and later worked for him in his investment advisory firm. John Burr Williams, while at Harvard University, wrote a paper on valuing common stock based on the future value of dividends. Both Benjamin Graham and John Burr Williams have practical experience working in the stock market. Although no one realized it at the time, this was the end of the great age of dividend yields. Never again were investors so well rewarded by dividends paid by issuers of common stocks. After World War II, dividend yields began to fall. There were two principal reasons for this. In the 1950s, the New York Stock Exchange launched a campaign with the slogan, Own a Share of America. Merrill Lynch spent millions to bring Wall Street to Main Street. Mutual funds began to be sold door to door. Mass marketing of common stock over the next 50 years raised ownership of shares by Americans from 5% to 50% of the population. Consequently, stockholders became far less sophisticated than in the days of Graham and Dodd. Companies were now often controlled by mutual fund managers rather than directly by investors. Separated from investment decisions, investors lost their focus on dividends. The second great capital market event of the 1950s was the publication of a paper on portfolio theory by Harry Markowitz, a student at Yale University. Unlike Ben Graham or John Burr Williams, Harry Markowitz had never worked on Wall Street and had never managed investments himself. Rather, he was a theoretical economist saying how investors should act based on non-scientific economic theory. Markowitz defined investment risk in terms of how much a stock price went up or down in the recent year. He didn't care much about dividends or intrinsic value. In this sense, Markowitz was a proponent of stock speculation interested in capital gains more than dividends. Markowitz was followed by other academic economists, some of whom, like him, won the Nobel Prize for their theories. Markowitz became known as the father of modern portfolio theory, which was the dominant basis for investment for the next half century. Dividends played little role in this theory of investments. The next great event, which affected dividend yields, occurred in the 1970s. Extreme deficit spending, as a result of President Johnson's war on poverty and the war in Vietnam, President Nixon 
was forced to devalue the US dollar, declaring that dollars would no longer be redeemed in gold. Consequently, international finance was now entirely based on fiat money. The American dollar was the preferred currency for international trade. Because the United States favored free trade, and because the American industrial base had been severely weakened by overregulation and industrial unions, the United States now imported more than it exported. This resulted in the accumulation of huge foreign balances in United States banks, making credit easy, and forcing down interest rates. As bond interest rates fell, dividend yields also fell. The final blow to dividend yields occurred in 1982, when, the Securities and Exchange Commission, allowed companies, to buy back their own stocks. Over the next 30 years, American corporations repurchased, more than $5 trillion, of their own stock. In fact, companies have been buying back shares, in such quantities, that prices have risen for 30 years, as evidenced, by ever higher, price earnings ratios. This, not only caused dividend yields to fall, but diverted, $5 trillion, from dividends to buybacks, in order to give value, to executive stock options. Due to a quirk, in accounting practice, the misuse of buybacks for executive remuneration, has seriously overstated corporate earnings. Because of these fundamental, long-term, structural changes, in the United States capital market, it is possible that dividend yields on common stock, may remain low, for many years to come. Let's summarize, what we have covered here. Prior to 1967, most stocks paid dividends that yielded more than AAA bonds. Today, many stocks pay no dividends at all, or very low dividends. This represents a structural change in the United States capital market, based on changing investor demographics. The next video in this series, explains in greater detail, based on information, from the Google Stock Screener, how stock dividend yields are broken down.